Hello everyone and welcome back to Pookie Kills. Today is finally the return of PyTorch Full Course Episode 2 and we're making neural networks in PyTorch. We did a linear regression from scratch well last episode and now we're making neural networks on two tasks, the MNIST dataset as well as the XOR problem. The next episode will be more complex architectures such as convolutional, VGG, and ResNet and all that good stuff. So stay tuned and now let's continue with our video. I expect you have PyTorch already installed. If you don't know how to install it, check out my previous video, but it should be just a conda install PyTorch or pip install torch, something like that. Just search it online, you'll see. So on the documentation, it shows like a beautiful menu bar. You click, 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 and then just paste the command and you're done. So as you can see right now, I'm currently on PyTorch version 1.10.0 and I have my GPU available, but we're not going to use it for now. So the first thing we want to do is define our data set in PyTorch. I'm going to be a bit lazy and just say import numpy as np, and I'm just going to define explicitly what the XOR data set looks like. So let's do that right now. So paste our data set, and our data set is done. Now we have to define our model. So to do that, we have to import a module from Torch that's called the NN module, which stands for, I don't know, I'm guessing it's neural network, but I didn't search. So I can do from Torch, import NN, and then what I want to do is, is I want to do class, well, class what? Class XOR predictor, class XOR model, inherits from something, and then dot module. So this is a convention. For every model you want to create in PyTorch, you have to inherit from nn.module. That makes it so that it works. It, trust me, if you do it, it works because it's going to run code behind the scenes to make sure that the class you provide is, well, can be used properly. So this is it, XOR model. And now I can pass in the init method. So define init self and nothing else. And I can just say self.layers is equal to nn.sequential. So I'm making a sequential layer, and now first I'm going to follow with a layer layer. So it has two inputs and I want to get one output. So I'm going to make first linear layer is from two to two, and then it's going to be an activation function like ReLU, and then it's going to be two to one, and then finally we're just doing ReLU once again. So this was the architecture I used in my neural from scratch. And now I can also put in an optimizer. So self.optimizer is equal to, I have to go now in torch.optim. So from torch.optim, import whatever. So I can import whatever I want. And the one I'm going to use right now is going to be Adam. So from torch.optim, import Adam. And then here I can just say self.optimizer is equal to the Adam optimizer which is just SGD, but better because it can adapt and like, you know, converge faster than just SGD. So once I have this layers optimizer, I have to define my loss. So I'm just going to say, hmm, which loss can I use? I, I'll, I'll be a little bit lazy. This time we'll try using, we'll still use MSC loss. So I can do that by doing self.loss is equal to nn.msc loss. So I have my loss and my layers, my optimizer. And we're on for the forward code. So define forward self x. And all I need to do right now is literally just do return self.layers x. That's it. That's it. That's all. And now if I run this, I have to make sure that my optimizer accepts well these parameters, all the parameters in this class. Over here, you have to do super dot underscore init like this. Now if I run this, this doesn't work. So first you have to convert it to a tensor. So here I pass in a numpy array, but don't forget you have to pass in a tensor first. So to convert to a tensor in numpy array, what you have to do is you have to do from torch import tensor and just wrap it like this, wrap tensor like this. And now we have our predictions and now they didn't do anything, right? So it's just zero, 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 zero. So to make it learn, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to have epochs equal 100, uh, 1000 for i in range epochs 
and now I'm just going to train it and that's it. So let's train it. Let's see how it works. So I train it XOR model. XOR model uh, dot fit and I pass in the X's and the Y's. So right now the fit method has not been implemented yet. So I have to implement it myself. So I have to do define fit self X Y and it's just going to fit it. So first what do I have to do? I have to forward it. So I have to say Y pred is equal to self dot forward X and then I have these predictions, I have to calculate the loss. So I can say loss is equal to self.loss. And then I pass in what? I pass in the y the true y. So I'll name it to y true. I pass in y true and y pred. And once I have that loss, I can return loss.item. And with that, I have to go backwards. So I have to make sure that the gradient propagates backward. So I just do loss dot backward and after that I have to apply the optimizer so self dot optimizer dot step so every time I start feed fitting I have to zero out the grid so I do self dot optimizer dot zero grad zero grad zero grad I believe this is it and now we do this, we do this, we do this. And now this is not working. So linear argument input must be tensor, not numpy and the array. So I'm kind of sick of that. So I'm just going to wrap it tensor like this. Tensor and then tensor also over here. Technically I can remove the numpy and the array. Oh no, 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 stay on page, stay on page. But I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And if you continue, you see it works, works. I have to move this line here at the top just to make sure that when we rerun this notebook in the future, it's not going to like crash. So this works, this works. And I don't need to put in this anymore. I can just put XOR model, X's. And you see it already works because I already converted to a tensor. And here, this seems to be working perfectly fine. So I cannot trust anything yet. So Let's say I do this again. Let's say I rerun this. You see, it did not work. So I'm going to try debugging this and I'll be back. So there we go, we got it. So this is the loss. So it actually worked all the time. So as you can see, the loss is still just always 0 0.5. And if you remember from my new from scratch, that's what happened when you had relu. So if I analyze it again, is this working enough? It seems to be going down. Seems to be going down. And it is going down indeed. So this work this is working. So Relu, as you can see, is still unstable on the XOR problem. So wow, for my new network from scratch, I had that exact same problem and on PyTorch it's still here. But it's not really the PyTorch fault. It's a, it's not anyone's fault. It's just XOR being XOR and Relu being Relu. So let them be in peace. And that's it. So if I rerun it again, uh, this one will be a this one will be a run that will not work. So if I run this again, see the loss is stuck at 0 0.5. So it will not move. If I reinitialize it again, now this might seem promising. So we try it again, and it seems that the loss, never mind, is not going down. So if I change in the act architecture, let me show you how easy it is. You just do nn dot sigmoid. And, and then dot sigmoid over here, you rerun it, and then I, I rerun this cell too. Bam, this is what we get, and it is going down. So, as you can see, it's going down steadily, surely, but slowly. So, if I just increase the number of epochs to 10,000, and I say print it only when it's um multiple of zero of a thousand then what I get is this so as you can see it's steadily going down 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 and down and now if I try predicting it again over here this is the right output so one zero one zero so we just successfully made our neural network on the XOR problem it's pretty easy and now it's time for the MNIST
Thanks for watching, I hope to see you in the other video of PyTorch Full Course where we try using the MNIST dataset with PyTorch to make some awesome mind-blowing stuff.